they know the rest of the Donbass is next on the Russian target list. We're the first British journalists to get a look at the foreign-supplied heavy artillery they hope will turn the war for them. And they remain optimistic, despite their recent losses, with this message to the Russians. It's not for long, the commander says. We'll kick you out and get it all back. The loss of one half of the Donbass is tough, but they're not giving up. They can't. This heavy artillery system is highly accurate and highly mobile. They've been provided to Ukraine by multiple countries. This one's a Caesar and it comes from France. But they are still heavily outnumbered and outgunned by Russian stocks. And that's why they're crying out for many more. The Russians are already pushing deeper into eastern Ukraine. This is the Ukrainians' most effective way of fighting back. The Donbass battlefield has seen the most intense fighting of the year so far since the Russian leader unilaterally declared the two regions independent. But Russia wants all of the Donbass, and it doesn't look like much is going to stop them. This is what a howitzer can do. Here it obliterates a Russian tank, but this modern weaponry has arrived late and maybe not in enough time to save the Donbass. There's an awful repetition about this slow grinding and brutal war. Aids unloaded for the residents of Krasnoharivka, on the front line of Russia's territorial ambitions in Ukraine for eight years. They have about 6,000 names of people who desperately need help. The residents feel caught in the middle of this land grab and attacked by both sides. <laughs> to drive around Donetsk is to take your life in your hands every time. The road is pitted with craters. He's pointing at a cluster bomb left in a field of wheat. So one shell landed there? Yes, yes. And it blew out all the windows here? The one hospital here has been hit several times. It's barely functioning, with most medics too scared to work here. There are shell craters dotted all around. And again, a distant sound of more artillery fire. Olga is immediately on edge. How often does this happen? Every day, she replies, all the time, every day. During the day when we're with people, it's not so scary. She insists we all go inside the hospital for safety. Okay. The boarded up windows inside offer slim protection against the power of a shell or an airstrike. It's an international war crime to deliberately target civilians or medical facilities. We travel even closer to the Russian line and Marinka town, which has changed hands a couple of times already and where the Russians are intensifying their attacks now. Here they say the Russians are using all types of artillery, all types of missile. And we were shown parts of what the police say were air bombs used for firing phosphorus. Phosphorus again. The Russian tactics are terrifyingly familiar. Hit, destroy, then advance. We're trying to keep to the tree line because they're pretty convinced that there are a lot of saboteurs, Russian saboteurs operating in this area who are acting as spotters for the attacks and the attacks have been pretty extensive. So again, the residents have gone underground. There are more than 20 people living in this one, old people and mothers with teenagers. How much longer do you think you can carry on like this? As long as possible, she says. We're afraid to go back home because there's nowhere to hide there. The fighting has left schools shattered, and there seems to be a deliberate low targeting here right through a shelter where families were taking cover. Nothing seems off limits in this war. Alex Crawford, Sky News, in the Donetsk region of the Donbass.